some cameras are all about cramming in features. The Sony A3000 doesn't play that game. It has been pared down to the basics. You get precisely what you need and a little more. But while rivals in its price tag skim on basics with plastic lens, years old designs, Sony plays its own game, making it very affordable that you actually want to own. I actually paid 200 US dollars for this model. Pros about this camera, it's absolutely incredible. It includes stabilized kit lens, more versatile than fixed lens bridge camera. It's comfortable, good ergonomics, great image quality, good autofocus, and a decent battery life. You can stay to the end of this video to see a sample of video and photo test. Cons, it feels a bit plasticky, slow burst shooting with limited buffer, sluggish to power on at times, but that doesn't annoy me. What annoys me is the low LED screen that you get with this device. I mean, you can't really use it in the sun because it wouldn't make any sense. You will also find a lug for the left side of the shoulder strap. Beneath this, most of the left end body is occupied by a large compartment door. Behind the door, you'll find a multi terminal and combined secure digital slash memory stick duo multi slot. At the top, you have the charging port. And the little circle you see right there is a LED light to show when your device has finished charging. At the bottom, the base of the hand grip is a compartment door for the infolithium battery pack, complete with small cutout that allows ingress for optional AC adapter kits, dummy battery cable. There is also a tripod mount nicely positioned on the central axis of the lens which may be very handy at times. This battery gives me up to 520 shots i think i'm not sure but it gets you up to 520 shots at the heart of the sony a3000 is an exmor aps hd cmos image sensor with an effective resolution of 20.1 megapixels total resolution is 20.4 megapixels and the aps c size chip has 3 to 2 aspect ratio unlike sony's dslr and slt models Though the sensor is not stabilized, as the A3000 supports only lens-based optical image stabilization, stabilization just like the NEX models. The kit lens is very decent, as I said, stay tuned to the end of this video to see sample shots. It's easy to put back in the lens, all you need to do is line up the dots and turn it to your right and you'll hear a click and you know you're good to go. At the top right of the camera. If you're looking from behind you'll find an LED flash which is easy and very good to access but I don't ever use this flash as it's kind of a poor quality. If you jump to the top of the body things get very straightforward as you would expect in an entry level camera. The leftmost end of the body is featureless, at the center there's a pop-up flash strobe, a multi-interface shoe for external strobes and between them sits a stereo microphone, a control panel and also this electronic viewfinder that I rarely use. The only other top deck controls are the mode dial, power level, shutter button and playback button. As you can see switch to turn on and you're good to go. On the rear of the Sony A3000 you'll find an interface of Sony mirrorless camera rather than a typical of translucent mirror model. At the right of the 3 inch LCD monitor are two soft buttons split by combined four-way controller and a control dial with another soft button at its center. As in the NEX cameras, the functions of the soft buttons change with operating mode and are indicated on the adjacent LCD panel and as you'd expect given the price tag, the LCD is neither articulated nor does it feature touch functionalities near the top right corner. It sits a movie record button snug up against the electronic viewfinder that I really really hate. If you're watching the videos you see that I skipped through a few modes that you can use to shoot different scenery, different shots depending on low light if the lighting is good. As I said before stick to the end of this video and you will see a test of these different modes in unedited versions. So if you go into the setup of the camera, you'll find a lot of different things you can play around with such as autofocus, manual focus. I rarely use manual focus because it's sometimes, sometimes hard to use because you'd have to turn the dial on the lens and it's kind of painful 
I don't really use that I use the autofocus but if I'm going for a certain shot I'll definitely use it it also comes with face recognition so that means once somebody's face is there you can capture it and you have face registration what that does is that you'll take someone's face and when you're taking a picture it will automatically capture their face if you go to the other settings you find image size here you can change the aspect ratio you can change the megapixels and all those good stuff which I would not definitely change sorry I was filled in the rain because I love you guys but in this settings we have live filters such as vivid standard portrait landscape mode and a lot of good things you can play around let's go for a video test right now and also a picture test so sit back and listen to the music and also drop a like down below if you reach this far in the video hashtag camera